Let's go now to John Porter, political commentator and co-host of podcast Chasing Dissent. That doesn't sound very conformist, John. Yeah, I know. I've actually just put a post up on YouTube asking if I should change the name because I think dissent's an unapproved word now. It's a hate word. It's a yeah, hate word. Yeah, I think it is. Do not, yeah. do not question authority, John. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to go. I need. I need to go back to my original name. I think maybe which was Chasing Liberty. Nice, positive, positive. I quite like Chasing Dissent, though. Use it while you can. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, let, let's see. Let's see how dissenting you are about these news stories. First of all, no, the swords being on. used by criminals to rob victims <laughs> of their lives, says the Home Office. We do see yeah. a bit of a knife, a knife uh, epidemic. Uh, David yep. Curtin said earlier on, it's not knives that kill people; it's people that kill people. Well, Doesn't yeah, make a difference. It does. I mean, you well, can't ban well, knives, can you? You can't. That's the thing. I mean, the Chinese try it. You know what? The, you know what happens in China if you want to go and buy a new cleaver or a kitchen, you know, a big kitchen knife or whatever. Um, you have to, you, no, no, you have to go to a shop, right? You you give your ID over, you're, you get a number laser engraved on the knife, they drill a hole in it, and it must be chained to your workstation while it's being used. Really? Every knife is registered. That's, that's what's remarkable. coming. Yeah, that's, that's China. Extraordinary. Yeah, but, yeah, I know. But they don't, they don't have... I don't know, but I guess they don't have the knife crime problems we have. <laughs> yeah, I've lived in Hong Kong. Unless you get too close China. to someone's table. <laughs> yeah, China. No, China's nuts. China's nuts. I remember I've been an operational police officer in the UK uh, and the Chinese. When something goes wrong at a Chinese takeaway, don't be near it because they'll be out there with the cleavels and they'll be running them out the street. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Chinese embassy, I'm told, has fewer offences and perhaps no yeah. offences than, than any other embassy in, in London. They do seem yeah. to be very well behaved, but Britain isn't. Yeah, but how many uh, police stations have they got? How many secret Chinese police stations have they got in London? You know, that's... Yeah, and remember, everybody everybody <laughs> Chinese that's here has a relative in China, and that's big leverage. That's big, big leverage, because you misbehave here, they'll come for you They'll come for your family back in China. One of the concerns about this is victims in this country are worried that their attackers mm -hmm. will come from them, for them, but they're not being told if uh, some of these prisoners are going to be released early in this, this remarkable yeah. scheme to make space yeah. for those who've used <laughs> sometimes ill-advised words on the internet, but words yeah. rather than knives. Uh, these, these victims aren't being told that the perpetrators of crimes against them are being released. What do you make of that, John, as a former cop? Well, I don't quite understand what we're trying to do with the prison, you know, service now. The way that we we don't let's I mean let's call it what it is. It's a punishment now, right? Nobody tries to rehabilitate you. You don't go to prison to get rehabilitated. If anything, as a prisoner or, or as a, a convict or a criminal, you go there to learn new skills and how not to get caught as easily the next time. So. Why are we even pretending that we're rehabilitating people? Because, you know, how long you give them in jail isn't going to make any difference to the way they behave when they come out. So so why, you know, why are we even doing this? You know, we need to we need to revisit what we're doing with with the with prisoners and, and with the convicts because it just isn't working. So I, I, I don't know how to fix it. I really don't. But do, do you think it's a fair trade to put uh, people using provocative language on social networks in prison and letting rapists and violent, violent criminals out? Well, I mean, let, let's, let's think about it from a legal perspective. And, and I, I bash on a lot about you know, how the law would look at things. And one of the big tests in court is, would a reasonable person expect... You know, and then you you add the thing. So, for instance, if you put hearty words on Facebook, would a reasonable person it, it be expected to go out and take action on what you said on Facebook? And the answer is always no, because nobody reasonable will do anything that you've suggested on social yeah. media. So mm -hmm. why are we putting these people in jail? Because they're failing a basic legal test at the very first point. So why are these people pleading guilty? 
That's the big question. And and I, I think I know why it is, because they're being cajoled into saying, well, you know, if you if you plead not guilty, you'll go on remand, you know, just like Ricky Jones, and um you'll uh, you'll your trial will be set for January or February. But if you plead guilty, you'll only get two years. That'll be less than a year with good behaviour. So you'll actually be halfway through it by the time you would go to trial if you just plead guilty now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think people are being they're being hoodwinked left, right, and centre. And you know, that this is a problem with government. What what is government trying to do here? Because Starmer has come in with not even a velvet glove. He's come in with an arm of fist. And and this isn't what the this isn't what the Labour Party's meant to be. Surely, it, it, it seems surprising. more like. Sorry. Perhaps it's not surprising then, sorry I talked over you, uh, that, that there's so much abuse going towards politicians. Maybe it's always been that way. Uh, but no, but, but mm-hmm. I have to tell you, I, I feel the politicians are bringing it on themselves uh, mm-hmm. by their current performance. Two months in, we've got this incredibly unpopular prime minister. Would, yeah. should, it, should it be allowed that this abuse takes place? I have to say, I would not prosecute people for being abusive towards me on the whole. Unless I no. thought it was going to harm my children. But where do you, you stand? You know, I, I think you're right. Unless you are threatened with violence or actions against your family, then if you can't take abuse, don't don't be there. You know, it's like if someone, if, if you know that you go down the pub and you start, let's just say, for instance, you went down the pub and started promoting the Bible and people started giving you abuse. You know, it's your choice to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And it's their choice to abuse you. If you want to take offence at it, that's your problem, in my view. We, we, just, we don't live in a touchy feely world, and it doesn't matter. I mean, for one of the here's one of the things I really wanted to touch on, if if you don't mind, Lim. But a um, farmer um, posted something on Twitter the other day. A farmer posted a thing, a McDonald's bag. He picked it up off the edge of his field or off his field or whatever. Somebody had discarded it from a vehicle. Obviously, they got a takeaway, and he said. Well, you know, why are McDonald's not printing the registration number of cars that get takeaways on the bags and then we could track them down and prosecute them? And that's like, that's exactly what's wrong with society right there because don't encourage people to take any kind of, you know, don't encourage people to be to be responsible citizens, to take pride in their country, to take pride in their their, their behaviour. Just punish them for, for stepping out of line. Govern me harder, govern me faster, and that's what Starmer's all about. In my view, uh, does, yeah. But, uh, in your view, uh, one last one that we can't really mention. Uh, by the way, I happen to agree with you. I'm not saying in your opinion. I happen to agree. With you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a, bit, fine, a bit accusational <laughs> on my part there. Um, last one: teachers are using sign language with pupils because they say that lockdown has harmed communication skills. So, so far, just well, a word on this. You know, there was a guy called um, Sherlock, and and his name is used quite a lot in a popular phrase, isn't it? <laughs> you know, because what did they expect? <laughs> what did they really expect? You know, I mean, we are we are a, we are a visual animal. We communicate more with body language than we do with speech. You know, you can tell what someone's thinking just by looking at them. You don't need to say anything, especially if they have an expressive face. You know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> you, you, you just... What am I telling you, you John? What am I telling you? <laughs> see, yeah, you can't, you can't pick up. You can't pick up nuances. You can't pick up meanings and things like that if you can't associate it with a face. You're completely destroying people. And, and my daughter was a victim of this as well. She was, she was in... Um, Early second, uh, sorry, early high school when this all started, and she just went to pieces. And she wasn't, I mean, she was a confident youngster, but then when this happens, she just went to pieces and the anxiety levels went through the roof. And it's it's only after two years of homeschooling and, and, and encouraging her that she now goes to college and, you know, it's making a big difference because she's now back interacting with people. But you know, th- th- that whole social experiment needs to be binned and never, ever repeated because if it's ever repeated, then you- you're going to have 30, 40 years of people that are screwed up 
and don't have any way of communicating properly with people. And that's that's part of what's going on right now. You can't communicate properly with people because you have to wrap everything in this touchy-feely wrapper. You know, I don't want to offend you, but, you know, well, I don't well, care. If I offend you, I offend you. You know, if you don't like it, don't listen to me. And And I'm not meaning turn off TNT, but if you don't want to listen to me, don't yeah. talk to me and don't go to my channel. You know, chasingdescent.com. You know, chasingdescent.com. <laughs> nicely done. Nicely done. We're going to get you back on. We're going to get you on next week if I've got anything to do with it. And the Chasing okay. Descent, don't change. Don't change the name. Don't conform. Right. Stay that way. That is John Porter. Find him at Chasing Descent and find him here next week as well, I'd say. Coming up next.